Well, welcome to TN Talk Virtual Edition. My name is Leslie Thompson. I am Director of Built Programs at the Sid Richardson Museum. And before we get into our conversation, I want to start us off first with a land acknowledgement, which pays tribute to the original inhabitants of the land that we are on. So we, the Sid Richardson Museum, respectfully acknowledge all Native American peoples who've lived on this land since time immemorial. And the Sid would especially like to acknowledge and pay respect to Wichita and affiliated tribes upon whose historical homeland our museum is located. So today, in addition, in addition to members of our museum staff, we have a special guest with us. And so I'm gonna go uh, in order of my screen and introduce each one of them. And when I do, just uh, give a quick wave and hello so people can see you. Um, so first, actually, uh, I'll begin with our special guest, Dr. Todd Kirkstetter. Leslie, hey audience, nice to be here. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Dr. Todd Kirkstetter is a professor of history at Texas Christian University here in Fort Worth, just down the street from the museum. Then I've got Renee Green, Good morning. And Renee is our admin assistant at the museum. Then I've got Janie Cumming. Hello. And Janie is our guest services manager. Then I've got Scott Winterrode. Hello, everyone. Scott is our director of the Sid Richardson Museum. Then I've got Shelby Orr. Hi, everybody. Shelby is director of school and family programs. And then I've got Betsy Thomas. Hello and Betsy is Director of Education Resources. So we've got a great group with us today. Um, and to quickly review for those who are not familiar with Tea and Talk, this is a program that uh, really provides an opportunity to slow down the art viewing process. I like to think of it as a visual deep dive into one work of art. Um, you know, studies have shown that the average museum visitor spends about 10 to 15 seconds with one work of art, which maybe at the time feels like a long time to be on your feet and looking at one thing, um, but it really does not afford you enough time to take in all the details um, that a painting has to offer. Um, now, normally our in-person program allots for about half an hour, um, but for the sake of the virtual experience today, we're gonna keep it down to 10 minutes. And then on the screen, I have an image of the painting we'll be looking to at today from our collection. And this is a painting by William Gilbert Gall. And I am going to go ahead and set my timer for 10 minutes. Um, and as I do that, let's go ahead and get into this. So when you see something you notice, go ahead and share. Well, right away, I'm I'm noticing the highlights across this painting. It, it captures my eye and it drags me all the way across the, the canvas, the, the kind of white touches that are in their clothing as well as in the grass. Mm, yeah, you're picking up kind of the, the lighter tones, the white of the uh, clothes, the teepee, and then even the white specks all throughout, yeah, the plains, the prairie area. What else do you notice? I also noticed that white, mostly in the form of the teepee, which to me, really took my eye immediately to that group of people clustered down in the foreground. Uh, and I imagine that's, um, I understand this is, should I say the name of the painting yet? Did, is that for later? You're um, welcome to say whatever you like. Uh, it's called, I think, the powwow. So I assume that that's the artist partly helping to draw my attention down to that group of guys. Yeah, so we're noticing kind of the action or the, the central subject of the painting um, that first is captured by uh, the teepee. Um, and then you see these, these two sets of figures um, near it. What else do you notice? I noticed their clothing. Uh, it looks like they've adapted the clothing of the settlers mm. in this painting. Yeah, what do you notice about their clothes? Well, they're, um, they just, I don't know. It's like they're, they're made from fabric instead of uh, animal skin. And, um, you know, of course there's a lot of white in it and they just they just look like they're dressed like um, a, a settler. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah, the clothing um, isn't the traditional indigenous uh, clothing that you would associate um, with each group of people and that it's more um, Western style with the 
um, the shirts and the vests, uh, the hats, and even some of the dresses. Yeah. That's, that's what I think of immediately is that, so it makes me wonder what time period this is. Is this, mm -hmm. um, is this a, a reservation? Is this, you know, like, is this, because obviously they've had Western influence. They have hats on. There's a metal coffee pot there. Um, this is not typically when you, and there's a, a wagon. Um, so they, they, there's obviously been that influence. Um, and so it just makes me wonder where they are, what time period is this, that kind of thing, so. Yeah, so we're noticing kind of some of the details um, that may hint at uh, what time period this might be set in. And those I'm things, thinking, of, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say those things caught my eye almost immediately also. And I think it's really interesting um, that this artist chose to depict this moment in uh, Western history or American Indian history, where uh, it, it seems like there's so much emphasis by, say, Russells and Remingtons on sort of depicting pre-contact and sort of unpolluted or authentic American Indians, where some people, I think, might look at this and say, well, this is, if they're, I hate to use the term, but corrupted or modernized and uh, in, a, in a period of transition, maybe. Um, so I, I thought that was also really interesting, the, the choice of depicting this scene and thinking about what time period it might be in. Yeah, yeah. So comparing it to um, other popular artists of the American West, like Charlie Russell and Frederick Remington that we have in our collection, um, who are painting a, a more romanticized version um, of American Indians and of a time period um, before when they were painting. So perhaps this is more... Um, in touch with the modern present day uh, of when the painting was was produced. Yeah. What else do you know? Shelby, you were going to say something. Um, yeah, um, Todd, you said the name of the painting, the powwow. Um, and I, I assume that it is referring to these gentlemen down here in the corner. But, you know, powwows are such a, a large gathering. And this painting is so sparse. Everything is so spread out. I mean, there's groups of things around the painting, but the space in between is uh, very loud. Mm, yeah, you're noticing, yeah, space between, um, even you can see some teepees in the, in the far background, both on the right and the left. Um, but yeah, I think like coming back into the setting of like, where could they be and thinking about space, there is so much open space and you can see out into the distance, uh, the horizon line and um, yeah, the expansiveness of it as well. And I'm glad you mentioned the, the powwow thing, because to me, that <clears throat> um, I, I kind of wondered that, because the powwows that I have been to have been like carnivals, big, lots of people, really colorful celebrations, lots of dancing. This one, I think, I, after I thought about it, goes to maybe another meaning of powwow, which is maybe to just put your heads together and talk. And it made me wonder what these guys are talking about. It made me wonder, you know, maybe why the women aren't included, what that might mean. And related to that with what, what Leslie was just saying about the, the background, you see some teepees. When I first looked at this, I thought, oh man, what a beautiful sky and the sunrise. And I looked more closely at the horizon and the, there are those kind of long peach colored horizontal stripes right there. And I thought that was part of the sky at first. And then I thought, oh no, I think those might be buildings or a fort. And I'm, it made me think, wonder if these guys are talking about, you know, are we on a reservation? What are we, how do we approach this moment where, you know, there are those buildings in the background, maybe it's a fort, maybe it's a reservation, um, but it got me thinking about, you know, what, what are they up to? What are they, what are they talking about over coffee in their powwow? Right, yeah, yeah, so bring it back to the figures in the foreground um, and their, their meeting. Um, what could they be talking about? Uh, could they be planning out their day? Like, could they be talking about the, what's surrounding them? Um, that's really interesting. And I'm really interested to hear your interpretation of those brushstrokes because it's, yeah, it's so minimal. Um, and we've got, that's the first time I've heard someone interpret as potentially buildings, um, which, uh, yeah, it, that's, that's a new one for me. Sometimes people say sunrise, some people say sunset, um, which um, spurs some great debates <laughs> about Perfect. time of day. Or maybe mesas, like in the Badlands or Southwest. I don't know. That that just came to me. I somehow wanted to put buildings in there, but 
I don't know. And I think it's kind of interesting to think about that. It's sort Absolutely. of indeterminate, at least to me. Yeah, yeah. It fascinates me as I look at this picture because when we think about the people that documented Native Americans across the country, they're they're much less prone to this painterly style that is really evident in this picture, right to the heart of that that issue of the sunset, the sky, whatever we're seeing back there. But it's just it's so much about the brushwork almost. It, it feels like it fights a little bit its subject matter because it's so much about it being a painterly painting at the same time that it's documenting a specific moment. And so it, it feels, I don't know, kind of odd to me. Mm, yeah, some tension behind uh, kind of uh, trying to evoke maybe a mood um, versus trying to pinpoint or, or document um, uh, what is actually happening, what he sees, what the artist sees um, before him. I would just like to pop in and say what a treat it is to hear some people who know about art talk about this. I just been thinking it's like, oh, what's going on in history? Um, so this, this, I'm loving this. Thank you. I feel like that's I'm back so, in school. Yeah, that's what's so interesting about these conversations is it really, you know, depending on you bringing in so many different backgrounds. Um, and just as you're thinking from a history perspective, interpreting uh, things that we're seeing from a, a totally new viewpoint um, than, than has been heard before. That's why it's great to talk about art with other people <laughs> because everyone sees something differently. What else you know, do you notice? I'm, I'm gonna say, cause I know we're probably running out of time, but I, you know, I think that I bring up that tension in large part cause we know this is meant to be a document. Um, from the census in 1890. And so I, I find it, again, I'm just, I'm back to um, just that beautiful working of the paint strokes across the canvas, across that uh, teepee. Um, and I'm just so fascinated that an artist like this um, is using these kind of as a document, but they're so uh, really in a painterly tradition that's coming out in the late 19th century. So there's something fascinating about that to me. and. Um, I just want to throw that out there. I had something, somebody mentioned mood a minute ago and I've always found this painting, I'll try to express what I mean. Um, I have two moods when I look at this painting. When I look at the foreground and I see like the slash of white in the front and the, the grasses and the, just the, the browns and the, it's, um, it's unsettling to me. It doesn't give me a warm fuzzy feeling. I don't like, I actually don't like it. So I, I, it's just very, very, um, I can't explain it. I just don't like it. Then there's an expanse in the back and I find that beautiful. So I find the expansion beautiful and I find the front, uh, the foreground, I find it very, um, very unsettling. And I, I don't know if anybody wants to talk about that, that actually knows about art <laughs> or history. <laughs> That's interesting, Todd, go ahead. I have a much cruder take on it. And I'm, I'm actually glad to hear somebody else say that because when I first looked at it, my first impression was, oh my gosh, it's kind of dirty and littery. Um, and that's not what I would normally have in mind is like, oh man, I, there, to me, there was a, kind of an ugliness to it yes. in the foreground. It, 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 oh, I'm sorry. Go I'm ahead. sorry. I was just going to say, I think it's because it's it, he's playing that the grasses so much across this and so it gives us this very kind of um, um, very sweeping movement throughout the picture. So it's it's very, you're right, it's very unsettled in the foreground. Um, there's a beauty to it. And then there's also kind of a messiness to it. And so I think that's part of the tension that we're feeling as we look at the work. Yeah. That's a great word, tension. It, it, it makes, the, the foreground makes me very tense. And I, <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> Well, and the grass looks kind of dead. I mean, there are pops of color, but it, it kind of has that desolate kind of feeling of in the tall brown, potentially dead <laughs> grass. Um, it, it makes it look a little more desolate. Yeah, yeah. And juxtapose against that like expansive sky with all those happy, colors. Happy sky. Yeah, yeah. It's got quite a dichotomy in one painting, which is really interesting. Um, 
Well, we've we've actually we've gone over our 10 minutes here uh, and I feel like we were just starting to get into some meaty stuff here. <laughs> um, but I, I will want to I do want to share a little more information about this painting because Scott um, had started touching on it a little bit. So um, as Todd mentioned that this painting is titled The Pow Wow. Um, what that could be referring to uh, is really up to interpretation about what the powwow is. Um, but this painting doesn't have an exact date, but it has been given um, the date of circa 1890. Um, and 1890 is also a very important date for Gilbert Gall um, in particular because he was one of the special agents on the um, 11th census, the 1890 census. Um, and he, along with some other artists, including another artist in our collection, um, Thomas Moran, or uh, Peter Moran, uh, was um, assigned to go out to, um, throughout the West um, and uh, go in particular to um, American Indians, to record American Indians. Um, and so Gilbert Gall spent some time um, uh, with the Sioux Indians in the Dakotas um, in Standing Rock Reservation. Um, so it's believed that this painting is from that, um, that assignment and that excursion. And it does kind of, um, you'll see uh, if you, you'll see some photographs um, from the same report um, that uh, resemble this um, as well. And it is kind of uh, desolate. You can see just little sparse poppings of teepees here and there. Um, and, it, and it's very interesting. And um, in, in his report, um, the artist William Gilbert Gall he notes, um, you know, like with this painting, the teepee, uh, what was once used uh, buffalo hide for the cover, is now made with canvas um, as it's supplied by the U.S. government. Uh, buffalo is uh, nearly extinct by this point. Um, and of course, being on a reservation, um, American Indians are allowed to really get out and hunt um, and roam like they did. Same thing, you know, going back into the meat. Um, that is hanging along the pole next to the teepee that would have once been um, bison and is now likely beef rations again from the government. Um, so he's 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 trying to um, again, like Scott was talking about, he's trying to record um, what he's seeing here, um, but doing it in a very very painterly way. Um, so it's it's yeah, it's quite interesting mix, um, but. Uh, with that, um, we actually, we'd love to keep, we're gonna end our conversation here today, um, but we'd love to keep the conversation going for those who are watching. Um, if you see something you notice, um, if, you, if you have any questions um, that this painting provokes for you, um, we would love to hear from you in the comments below. Um, but otherwise, uh, I've really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much, Todd, and thank you everyone. Um, for joining us. This was a great tea and talk. So thank you.